Hey, so it's the time to change coming up. Spring forward, fall back. Uh, it's the fall, so we'll be falling back an hour. I'm curious what you guys do to manage the time change. I feel like it can be really disruptive for our productivity and for just kind of our general life experience. I imagine a lot of you do what I used to do all the time, which was basically nothing. Do nothing to prepare for it and just get slammed by it, which means that, you know, the first couple of days you think you got it and then and if you didn't forget something or show up to an appointment at the wrong time, then, you know, you kind of manage it and then you, it'll, you know, hit you a few days later and you're like, ugh, why do I feel so weird and yucky and, you know, tired and hungry at the wrong time and not sleepy at the right time and all that stuff. It's just, you know, it's a hassle. Last year I tried something, or the last time change, I tried something that actually worked pretty well and I'm not quite sure why I think that I'm gonna try something else this time. But anyway, last time what I did was kind of work up to it. So I, uh, for a couple of weeks ahead of time, I started adjusting my bedtime and then figuring with a bedtime adjustment that everything would kind of fall in line with that. And you know what, it actually worked pretty well. Because we're still in a pandemic, I don't actually have that many outside, like external things that involve a lot of other people. Of course I have client appointments and you know, interactions with friends and family and all that. But most of my day, I have a lot of control over. And mainly, I'm not going out in the evenings. And so, like, my bedtime is something that I do have quite a bit of control over these days. And, you know, God willing, that's not going to be always true and that we will be able to enjoy our nightlife more. But I thought maybe this would be a fun time to experiment with something that would be harder to do at another time. So the experiment is basically don't do the time change. So what I'm gonna do is obviously my clocks will change, but I'm going to reorient myself. So I actually jotted down things that kind of always happen at the same time every day. So I usually wake up around 7.30 and that's the time that I feed my little guinea pigs. Uh, and so I'm gonna just, the clock will say 6.30 now. And, but it'll be the same time. The, I feed the, the piggies in the evening and um, you know that's usually around 6.30 and so that'll be 5.30. Um, and then bedtime for me is usually around 10.30 so that will be 9.30. 9.30 feels like <laughs> crazy, like I have no life at all, but you know, right now we kind of don't have a life so maybe that's okay. And so I've translated them for myself here on this sheet and I'm gonna just keep my eye on them and see how long I can just maintain the status quo and not really have to adjust at all. Now, I've chosen not to adjust my available hours for my clients, so they'll be able to schedule with me in what the calendar and the time says, not according to my, um, you know, one hour ahead regime. And, um, you know, I'll still be interacting with friends and family and everybody else on the universally accepted clock, but I'm gonna to try to keep my clock my personal sort of internal clock on the way that is today and will not be tomorrow. I'm filming this the night before the time change. We'll see how it goes. I think my guinea pigs will like not having to transition and they are very regimented. I think I will enjoy not having the transition. Now, one thing that I will be giving up I live here in the Pacific Northwest and we've already gotten our days pretty short, which means even when I wake up at 7.30, it's already dark. Normally when you do the time change and you fall back, you actually get a few weeks of daylight again in the mornings. And uh, I won't be able to enjoy that if I'm waking up at the new time of 6.30. So I'll be waking up in the dark, which is a bummer. Um, so I might regret this. I thought I'd share this like kickoff day with you guys and then um, I'll check in a few times and see how it goes. My suspicion, my prediction is that I will eventually adjust to everybody and my schedule will start aligning with what I do now as far as the clock goes. But I hope maybe that it will be a lot more gradual. Like maybe I'll do it over a month or two. So anyway, We'll see how it goes. I'll report back. I'm uh, looking forward to finishing up this video because I'd love to post it and hear what you guys do. I think that, like I said, I, I tie this into my whole quest of, you know, peaceful and low stress productivity and um, any productivity tips that we can share 
that relate to, you know, kind of your experience of the productivity of, you know, getting stuff done in a way that, that feels good, that, that, that makes your body work well, which of course supports your brain and vice versa. And, you know, really just makes life nicer. Well then I'm all for it. Okay, so it is day three of the time change or the not changing with the time, time change experiment. And it's actually going pretty well. Now, of course, you know, I'm only three mornings into this, but so far so good. I have left a couple of clocks around the house at the old time, uh, one at my bedside and one in the kitchen. And that actually kind of helps me sort of stay grounded in the old time. So that's really kind of nice. It's working, helpful, keeps me sort of committed to this uh, experiment here. One nice little benefit that's happened is that my desire to eat, those my eating times and my exercise times actually line up better or maybe better said that they are not aligned. Meaning it, there were a couple of classes that I would take that happened at the time when I would normally get hungry. And so it would get kind of inconvenient where I'd be hungry in the middle of the class and just generally feel uncomfortable. So now it works out well because I'm an hour earlier, so I eat when I'm hungry and then I take my class. So anyway, so far so good. I will report back and let you know how it goes. Hey everybody, I am checking back with you about my time change experiment. Um, I just got back from a hike and I promised myself that I would film today, so I didn't want to fuss a whole lot, so I'm just sitting down and filming. So here we go. So far, so good. It's been going really well. I've really been enjoying, well, two things. One, the lack of painful transition. There's not been a day where I go, oh, why do I feel so weird and yucky? And oh, I, you know, I've just, continuing on as life continued on and there was no transition. So that has been great. Of course, I think that's only possible because life is so simplified right now. And then the second thing is that I have uh, really been enjoying what feels like an extra hour in the morning because the rest of the world shifted an hour later, but I didn't. So I'm getting an extra hour in the morning and it turns out that I'm kind of a morning person. I didn't really know that about myself. I kind of thought that I was never a morning person, but I think I'm not a morning person in the sense that I don't like to be super social in the mornings. I don't like to be all chit chatty. And you know, I'm a pretty introverted introvert. So having the energy for other people in the morning is not my thing, but turns out my brain is pretty fresh in the morning. So it's a great time for me to get work done, quiet work. That quiet work is kind of what I do for a living. So it's a great time to just sort of wake up, start my day and then blam, just get some good solid work done before my sort of time with other people starts. I'm enjoying that a whole lot. And I'm kind of thinking ahead to when the time changes again and how I might lose that. And um, I'm getting pretty bummed about it. So I'm learning something about myself here that um, I didn't really know. And that I'm, and I'm kind of enjoying, I'm enjoying this experiment a lot. I just want to kind of add in here that I understand what a sort of privilege it is to be able to experiment with my life. And I encourage all of you to experiment with your lives to whatever extent you can. You know, the object of the game here is to make your, you know, experience of going through your day and doing your tasks and managing your time and, you know, getting stuff done, um, making that process easier on yourself, making it even enjoyable. And so, you know, to the extent that we can modify or tweak or adjust to a way that serves you, then that's what I'm all about here. I, I want you to adjust your life and kind of claim it as your own and not get kind of pushed around by the world. And the time clock changing definitely pushes us around. So can we do this in a way that serves us? Because I think, you know, when we're better served, we're happier and then that makes the world happier. That's a good thing. That's it for now. I'm going to keep running this experiment just a little bit longer. We'll see. I did actually have a little bit of a, a late bedtime the last couple nights and a late wake time the last couple mornings. And I don't know if that's just a blip. You know, we all have normal sort of ups and downs on our schedule. That's fine. Or if this is me sort of very slowly adjusting to the clock. If that's the case, then that's okay. I will miss having my early mornings, but it's okay. Then it'll make it kind of easier to be on everybody else's clock. If it's just part of the ups and downs, well, then that's okay too. And I can just stay on the, the schedule that I was on. So I'm gonna keep my eye on that and see what's happening. And um, we'll see. And then I think, you know, I'll check back a couple more times and we'll see if we can kind of make any conclusions about 
how to manage this in the future. But even if we don't have a, a conclusion about how to manage time changes, I have learned something already, which is that I uh, love to get some quiet, focused work done in the morning before I have appointments and exercise classes and things that start kind of, you know, around eight or nine in the morning. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll check back with you soon. Okay, so it has been a while since I last filmed. We have gotten through almost all of the time change and we're about to go back to daylight savings. And I wanted to check back in with you and let you know how it's going and offer some reflections. So for me personally, this has been a great experiment. Um, in the last clip, I think I mentioned that I had just started to kind of drift back towards the 7.30 to 10.30 uh, schedule instead of the unchanged 6.30 to 9.30. That is, I let the clocks change, but I didn't. And I did start to fade, but primarily I think that was actually because I have bouts of insomnia. So then I had to sleep in and uh, to catch up on some sleep. And so then that threw things off and then I ended up on this kind of later schedule. So what that means is I'm gonna go back uh, to having to struggle with a time change, which is a bummer. Thank you, insomnia. Uh, we're about two weeks out now from the next time change. So I'm going to work towards getting myself back, just gradually working over the next two weeks to get myself on the 6.30 to 9.30 schedule so that when the clocks change, I will the clocks will say 7.30 to 10.30 and I will just keep trucking along without much transition and without much pain, we hope. So we all know time changes are a big fat bummer. They are known for causing more heart attacks. I actually read up on this and it's um, not entirely true. There's more heart attacks on the Monday, but then if you just look at the week after a time change, apparently the uh, entire week as a whole has the same number of heart attacks on average um, as any other week. So that's kind of been debunked, but the traffic accidents is not debunked. That is definitely something as far as I can tell in my quick research, that is a phenomenon and it's no good. So let's try to, you know, avoid those heart attacks if they are a thing and um, avoid those traffic accidents for sure. We definitely want to avoid also missing appointments and, you know, getting screwed up in, uh, you know, your calendar, which can easily happen in a time change. And then the thing that I was working on, the fourth phenomenon, which is just that sense a few days after the time change where you're like, Blech, I feel out of whack. Solving all those problems is our objective. I've done it in two different ways and I would recommend them both. One, and that's probably the more realistic one and the one I'm gonna have to do um, over the next two weeks is to just gradually change my bedtime going to uh, bed a little bit earlier in this sequence so that um, when the clocks change, then I will be already there. And then if you have the option to do it the way I did it back in the um, fall time change, I recommend it. I highly recommend it. And that is to just not change at all. Let the clocks change, but you don't change your life. It was really smooth sailing and it worked well. As I said earlier, it maybe isn't realistic uh, because maybe you have a life and you want to engage uh, with other people out in the world and uh, you want to do it on the world's schedule. And so if you stick to your own schedule, you may not be able to jive with everybody else. But it is something worth playing with, I think, or at least considering. So what are my takeaways? One, I do recommend planning your approach to time changes ahead of time using one of the two methods I earlier recommended. And two, I think this experiment shows us the value of experimenting. I learned a couple things about myself throughout this experiment, but that I don't think I would have learned otherwise. I have learned that I really love not being hungry in my scheduled exercise classes. So I am going to uh, try to find other exercise classes when the time changes so that I can not be hangry in the middle of downward dog. And most important, I learned that I actually really, really, really love that quiet work time before the rest of the world wakes up. So I'm not gonna get that during daylight savings, but I can really enjoy it in those sort of cold, quiet winter months. So that is something that I will get to use during the those months of the year. And to the extent that I can make them happen the rest of the year, well, great. I hope for you that you can experiment and maybe you'll make discoveries that you didn't expect just like I did. So there you go, another you to do you experiment in the can. I hope that you this inspires you to experiment with your life, with your time management, with your calendar, with how you approach time changes. 
Let us know in the comments below if you are going to manage the next time change differently, or maybe you already had a way to do it that's better than anything I mentioned. I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.